Man, I grew up in, well, Connecticut, but also like Venezuela. I know that sounds strange, but first few years of my life were spent in a foreign country. I don't remember any of it. I grew up in Chattanooga. I was in the boys choir. My, my earliest memories of music were church, singing hymns with people. And then my mom took me to audition for the boys choir against my will. And they were like, do you know any songs? I was like, for some reason, I thought Yankee Doodle was a good <laughs> audition. I got accepted to the boys choir uh, with my fellow boys choir uh, alumni, Brent Thompson. Boys choir led me to appreciate music, which led me to coming to school here, which led to the rest of my story. I, I attribute Chattanooga solely for, for boys choir because the music scene there was it wasn't non-existent, but it wasn't something I paid attention to until I got to Knoxville. And then I was like, oh, a music scene. Knoxville has a beating heart of a music scene that I, that I was looking for in Chattanooga. You know, I always felt like I was a hybrid because I didn't move to the South until, I don't know, high school, the beginning part of high school. Um, Tennessee is a crazy, wonderful, beautiful place. And it felt like a foreign land when I moved here because I went from Connecticut to New York and grew up in like, my middle school years were in Poughkeepsie, which is upstate New York. So when I moved to Tennessee, this is one of my favorite stories. My good friends at the time, because when you're in middle school, you think that your best friends in middle school are gonna be your friends for life. Uh, they threw me a going away party and uh, they gave me a Dolly Parton cassette tape and it had Jolene on it. And they also gave me a cowboy hat and they did this making fun of Dolly Parton because they thought Tennessee is gonna be this redneck hick state. Little did they know, and little did I know, what actually ended up happening was I played that tape and that song, Jolene, over and over and over again. And I fell in love with Tennessee before I even moved here. So I moved here in, I guess, 1996 to come to, to college. And uh, I thought I wanted to be a vet and that's not what happened. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking right now. <laughs> but I still have animals, so, you know. Jolene's like the perfect introduction to Tennessee. Yeah. Also, my earliest memory of UTK has got to be seeing Benny at a tailgate with a booth set up or in the presidential courtyard with a table set up and just hearing music, hearing music that I didn't recognize, hearing music that sounded new to me which was huge in college because everyone around me is listening to Sublime and 311 and you know anything that was top 40 radio that was saturated all over the country was the exact opposite of what I got at UTK. It was fresh music, it was exciting, it was something that I remember before talking to Benny, seeing them all over the place, hearing them all over the place and I didn't no Chattanooga had a college station when I was in Chattanooga. I didn't pay attention to it. Um, but Benny was this outspoken, just supporter of art. And UTK felt that way all over the city. I came here in my 86 uh, Isuzu Trooper and I had a little cassette tape that I would pop into my thing and it would I would play my Discman through the cassette. Anyway, long story short, I figured out how to tune into the radio and I became addicted to 90.3 The Rock and I, I think I blame the radio station for not becoming a vet because there was all this music that I'd never heard before that wasn't U2 or Fish or whatever else was on the radio at the time. And that was my introduction to 90.3 The Rock. And Benny, I didn't know who he was. He was, I guess he was like a, a superstar celebrity, non-entity that I didn't ever think I would ever meet in person. And when I did finally meet him in person, I just was like, yep. I still get a little bit of a jolt when I talk to him. Like he's a local. He's a superstar. He's a superstar. He's a rock star. A he's a rock star. It. Yeah. Yeah. I think you said it best when you said like UTK changed the course from being a vet to being a musician as a as an actual thing, like a viable thing. I went from playing guitar and singing in my bedroom in Chattanooga or at a party at a friend's house to being in college and all of a sudden thinking, oh, I need to start a band. Like, I need to go do this for, for the public. And that was never a thought I had had before Knoxville. I can only imagine that UTK was a huge part of that for me. Just it, understanding that the culture, that music was a thing that people did here. And I met Benny as a college kid, as a music fan, and then started Llama Train with, with three other people here that we met at, at college. 
And once we started playing the pub and we started playing, you know, Barley's around town and, and starting to pick up steam, we then met Benny as a band. And that's, I think, if he goes down in history for anything, it is his undying support of local music, his unwavering support of lifting up idiot kids who are in bands for the first time. That's an enormous quality that I don't think he gets enough attention for. He's known for it. It's not enough. He's done it more than anyone else in town, with the exception of maybe Wayne Bledsoe. UT, UT played WUT, 90.3 The Rock, WUTK. They played the shittiest demos that I made, which was the, my first attempt at, attempts at songwriting, which was like, I'm going to do a stream of consciousness thing yeah. and record it. And I'm going to get my friend to record it. And we're going to do the best we can. And they still put it out there and promoted our shows and helped us to get to that next place. I set my foot inside the pilot light because of what I heard on any point through the rock. And I saw people playing music. And at the time I was, I was taking piano lessons as an elective at UT to fulfill my art elective as I was going to pursue my biology major to become a vet. And I saw Kat Brock on stage performing with sub blue collar. And I was like, holy shit, you mean, this happens, people write and play music and other people come and they freak out and listen to it. And it's not Madonna. Yeah. Like that for me was just, I mean, I was that girl in the back going, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. And then I'd go home and try to figure out how to write a song because I thought it was magic. You yeah. had to have like magic stardust to write a song or you had to be blessed or have some divine intervention. But that, changed my life. Cat Brock is a monster also. I have very vivid memories of her and Matt Ermey and John Sexton, the Whiskey Scars, like yep. tons, tons of, there's something in the water in Knoxville with the music scene. There, she was especially a gateway drug. Yeah. But Dave Campbell put me on the spot and I sang a song in front of an audience for the first time and I was like, holy shit. Oh, this is it. This is my life for the rest of my life. This is it. <laughs> And here we are now. I bet you <laughs> I bet you had the same experience, and I bet most bands in Knoxville had the same experience of hearing yourself on UTK, that jolt that you got of like, oh, that's like turning the radio on. And after like three weeks of thinking like, oh, I'm, they're, they're going to play me at some point and not hearing it and not hearing it and then hearing yourself on like a locals only and being like, holy shit. Yeah. I was holy so shit. I'm on the radio time. right now. I'm going to text everybody I know. Well, but then you know what else happens is everybody, you know, texts you. And they're like, holy <laughs> shit, I heard you on 93. Turn it on 93 right I now. I think it's you right now. Oh right my God. Now. And like, they call you and they're like holding it up to the, the speaker yep. in the car. I'm like, yeah, yep. it's me. That was enormous for me. Like enormous. Being able to hear something that I crafted on the air and going, oh shit, the bass is way too loud. <laughs> It's on the radio. Like that, that jolt was something that I still get excited about. I also find that they've, you know, over the years have kept the library has been pretty integrated and pretty comprehensive. And like, I'll hear a song that we released 10 years ago, yeah. still play it on 90.3. Yep. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. I forgot about this. If it hadn't been for the radio station, I would never have set foot at the pilot light. I would have never have met the people that I met. I wouldn't be obviously sitting here in this room with you guys. If we walked it back, I wouldn't have the jobs. That I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have anything in my life <laughs> that I have today if it hadn't been for that.